Shalom Mishpachim. Welcome to His Narrow Bridge. Our time together today is meant to immerse ourselves in the word of Yahweh. It is meant to be a personal time of connection to the word for each of us. I will read each word as translated in English in an interlinear Hebrew Bible. These shows are pre-recorded, so I will be in chat when they air. Feel free to use the chat to post anything that comes to your mind as we read the word. We will begin with prayer, followed by time for each of us to say our own personal prayers. Our beloved friend, Alan Horvath, taught us, make Elohim number one on a list of one. We pray in the name of Elohim, which includes Yahweh, Yeshua, and the Ruach HaKodesh. Thank you, Elohim, for our lives and all you provide. We ask for a hedge of protection around our mishpacha as we pray and study. We love you dearly. We are your children. We come to you with questions as we seek our personal relationships with you. Please help us learn. If any darkness enters our time together, we ask you now to rebuke it. We will now listen to your word as we immerse ourselves in it and let it speak to us. Mark chapter 12, and he began to speak with them in parables. A certain man planted a vineyard and surrounded it with a hedge, and he dug in it a wine press, and built in it a tower, and leased it to some workers and left. And in time he sent his servant to the workers, so that he might take from the fruit of the vineyard but they beat him and sent him away empty-handed. And again, he sent a different servant also. And that one they stoned and wounded and sent him away in shame. And again, he also sent another one, and that one they killed. And many other servants, he said, and some they beat, but some they killed. And afterwards, he had one beloved son, and he sent him to them at the end, for he said, Perhaps they might be ashamed in front of my son. But those workers said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and then the inheritance will be ours. And they took him and killed him and threw him outside the vineyard. Then what should the master of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy those workers and give the vineyard to others. Have you not even read the scripture that the rock that the builders rejected, that has become the head of the corner? This came from the presence of Master Yahweh, and it is a wonder before our eyes. Psalm 118, verse 22. The stone which rejected the builders has become the chief cornerstone. Doing of Yahweh was this. It is marvelous in our eyes. Verse 12, And they were seeking to seize him, for they realized that he spoke this parable about them, but they were afraid of the people, and they left him and departed. And they sent men to him from the scribes and from the Herodians to ensnare him in speech. And they came and asked him, Teacher, we realize that you are true and do not show favoritism to men, for you do not look on the faces of the sons of men, rather in truth you teach the way of Elohim. Is it lawful to give the head tax to Caesar or not? Should we give or not? But he knew their trickery and said to them, Why do you tempt me? Bring a denarii to me to see. And they brought it to him. He said to them, Whose image is this and whose inscriptions are those? And they said, Caesar's. Yeshua said to them, Give to Caesar that of Caesar 
and that of Elohim's to Elohim. And they marveled at him. And the Sadducees came to him, those who say there is no resurrection, and they were asking him and saying, Teacher, Moshe wrote to us that if a brother dies and leaves a wife but no sons does he leave behind, he should take his brother's wife and raise up seed for his brother. Deuteronomy 25, verse 5. If dwell brothers together and dies one of them, and son has no to not, shall be married the widow of the dead man outside the family to a stranger. Her husband's brother shall go into her and take her his as wife and perform the duty of a brother-in-law to her. And it shall be that the firstborn son which she bears will succeed to the name of his brother dead, that not may be blotted out his name from Israel. Verse 20, there were seven brothers, and the first took a wife and died, though he did not leave behind any seed. And the second took her and died, though he also did not leave behind any seed. And the third likewise, and all seven of them took her and did not leave behind any seed. The last of all of them also died, as did the woman. Therefore, in the resurrection, which one of them will she be a wife of? For all seven of them took her. Yeshua said to them, Isn't it because of this that you err, that you do not understand the scriptures nor the power of Elohim? For when they rise from the dead, they do not marry women, nor are women given in marriage to men. Rather, they are like the messengers who are in heaven. Now concerning the dead, who you say will not rise, have you read in the book of Moshe of how from the bush Elohim said to him, I am the Elohim of Abraham, and the Elohim of Yitzchak, and the Elohim of Yaakov. Exodus 3, 6, transposition of words in Kaburis in 1905 here has no direct effect on the meaning. Also for 1234, Exodus 3, verse 6. Moreover, he said, I am the Elohim of your father, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob, and hid Moses his face, for he was afraid to look upon Elohim. Verse 27, and he is not the Elohim of the dead, but of the living. You err greatly, therefore. And one of the scribes drew near and heard them disputing, and saw that he answered them the matter well. And he asked, What is the first commandment of all of them? And Yeshua said to him, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, Master Yahweh our Elohim is one. And you should love Master Eloh Yahweh your Elohim with all your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind, and with all of your strength. This is the first commandment, Deuteronomy 6, verse 4. Here Israel, Yahweh, our Elohim, Yahweh is one. And you shall love Yahweh, your Elohim, with all your heart, which is levavecha, and with all your soul, nafshecha, and with all your strength, meodecha. Verse 31, and the second that is like it is that you should love your neighbor as yourself. Leviticus 19, verse 18, not you shall take vengeance nor bear any grudge against the sons of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am Yahweh. So what is great is that Things that are traditionally viewed as Christian 
have roots in scripture. And there is no other commandment greater than these. Verse 32, that scribe said to him, well said, Rabbi, you have spoken in truth that he is one and there are no others apart from him and that a man should love him with all the heart and all the mind and with all the soul and with all the strength and that he should love his neighbor like himself. This is greater than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. And Yeshua saw that he answered the matter wisely. He answered and said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of Elohim. And no men again dared to question him. While teaching in the temple, Yeshua answered and said, how do the scribes say that the Mashiach is the son of Dawid? For Dawid spoke by the Ruish, Ruach HaKodesh. Yahweh said to my master, sit on my right until I place your enemies under your feet like a footstool. Psalm 110, verse 1. Of David, a psalm said Yahweh to my Yah. Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Verse 37. Since Dawid calls him my master, how then is he his son? And all of the crowd were gladly hearing him. So the word for foot is regel. Reish Gimel Lamed, and Reglich is used here to be your footstool. Mark 12, verse 38, and in his teaching he would say to them, Beware of the scribes who walk in long roads and love a greeting in the streets, and the chief seats in the assembly, and chief places at banquets, those who devour the houses of widows, with the pretext that they lengthen their prayers, they will receive the greater judgment. And when Yeshua sat near the treasury, he was looking at how the crowds were casting money into the treasury, and many rich men were casting in much. And a certain poor widow came and cast in two minas, which are small coins. And Yeshua called his disciples and said to them, Truly, I say to you that this poor widow gave more than all the men who cast his cast into the treasury, for all of them gave from their abundance, but this one cast in from her need. She had cast in everything that she had, all her goods. What a man she had. Eloheinu, velohe avosenu, omnom kein, yet ser so chein bonu, boch lechatz dei, rav Va'aneinu, va'aneinu, solachti, gal meragel, vegam pagel si. Hatoz nechomimorom 
Yo shave to Hila Lishmawa El Horina Lishmawa El Horina Lishmawa We call him Liberty Man. Look at this guy, he's a, a liberty stud. hero. Now this guy is not a guy you want to mess with, right? And he's uh, he's seated in Liberty. Okay, explain who this guy is. Liberty Man. Liberty Man, or the Liberty hero that he represents, is the fruit. He is the result of obeying the matrix of Liberty that you see on this monument. And he is seated in liberty. Now, I want you to be careful to notice these details. Notice that he's holding broken chains in his left hand. Notice that he has where the chains were bound to his legs. Notice that, that he is now seated in liberty. He's got that good look on his face like, listen, I'm free. But I'm looking out, defending my liberty, but I'm free. And notice the claw that is on his right shoulder. That claw relates to a skin that goes around to the left here, and you see a lion's head, an entire lion skin. That ultimately re represented the lion of the English tyrant back in those days. So he, so he has slain the lion. He's slain the lion, and that's what it says here on the left. Tyranny is defeated, and you see Liberty Man standing over tyranny with his foot on the chest of tyranny. He's holding tyranny down. And again, the pilgrims won this victory without violence of any kind, except living out God's principles. You know, one of the things that's striking me is the fact that this is talking about our forefathers, the pilgrims, but this guy is not some wimpish little religious guy. I mean, this guy is a stud, right? Yeah. He, he's strong, he's yeah. looking out, he has just defeated a beast, and he's got a sword in his hand. That's right. And he's here to protect, right? That's right. He's here to protect his family and to defend the, the, the laws that they have made and ultimately to defend their values and their character, their faith. Exactly, exactly. And it shows you that if you do it right, you can be strong as an individual. You can defend liberty. And if need be, you can fight. You don't want to fight, but if you have to, you're ready. But the point is, because you've done it God's way, there is a long-term blessing that goes with it. This is awesome. This is it. <laughs> this is it. So Kirk, this is that recipe. This is that, that strategy, that matrix, that was what built America. This is it. And if we want to try something else, yeah, people can try other things. But in the history of the world, the one strategy that has brought more liberty, more prosperity, and more joy than any other is this strategy. Why would you go anywhere else?
Ace Fatso. Yeah. 
ma Hashem Vechaneili Hashem Heye Ozeli Elecha Hashem Ekra Ve'el Hashem Eschanan Shema Hashem Vechaneili Hashem Heye Ozeli For more information about these videos, look at the video description and click more. You can then have links to my YouTube channel and um, the YouTube playlist, which has all the Aramaic English New Testament videos, Bible Hub links, and Odeot. So this is useful because you can click a chapter and go word by word through the scriptures and get details about each word and where they are used throughout the Bible.